Welcome to the EPIRB Project's Hydromorphological Assessment Guide. This video focuses on the methodology used to assess basic hydromorphology quality elements specific to the EPIRB project. What is hydromorphology? Hydromorphology brings together two subjects, hydrological regime and morphological conditions. Hydrological regime deals with the quantity and dynamics of water flow, while morphological conditions refer to the shape of a particular water body, for example, river or channel width, depth and slope variations, bed structure and substrate, and riparian zone and floodplain structure. The ecological status classification of a water body is based on biological elements, while hydromorphological, chemical, and physico-chemical components are supporting elements that contribute to a better understanding of a water body's overall ecological status. Hydrological assessment involves methods and procedures used to characterize hydromorphological status of streams, rivers, and lakes. Hydromorphological assessment consists of six principal steps. Although different field survey procedures are used for rivers and lakes, as they involve assessment of different qualities. Applied survey protocols not only describe the present state of water bodies, they also compare the present state of water bodies to the reference condition. We proceed from the assumption that reference conditions for all types of river and lake water bodies have been identified, and that they reflect conditions that are totally undisturbed or very nearly so. On the other hand, where heavily modified water bodies and artificial water bodies are concerned, maximum ecological potential has been defined. The first step, preparation, involves desk research and a thorough collection of data through maps, aerial photographs, or other materials. The second step is to define the survey strategy. For rivers, this means establishing relevant survey units. For lakes, this involves deciding on the number of habitat observation plots or HAB plots. The next steps are to prepare logistically for the field trip and to gather needed materials and equipment. Another step takes place prior to the field survey, assessment of map-based parameters. The results obtained here can be checked later while in the field. The fifth step, the field survey itself, involves the collection of field protocol parameters used to characterize rivers and lakes and their surroundings. The last step is to use the scored assessment parameters to determine the classification of hydromorphological modification. Step 1. Preparation The assessment process starts with the collection of detailed information and data to gain advanced knowledge of the survey area. Study any previous assessment work that has been done in the area and gather all available information on morphological characteristics of channels, lakes, floodplains, and the riparian zone, water body types and existing anthropogenic pressures, past and present water level and water flow data and their coordinates, water body length, and size of the water basin area. Step 2. Defining the survey strategy. Based on the results obtained beforehand, a representative survey unit should be established on the selected stretch of river. This survey unit forms the basis of the hydromorphological survey. The main survey unit should be subdivided into five sub-survey units spaced equally apart. The exact range of the survey unit should accurately reflect the river's morphological characteristics. The lengths of survey units and sub-survey units are scaled according to the river's size. Survey units should be 200 meters, 500 meters, 1 kilometer, or of variable lengths according to the degree of morphological uniformity and modification. When conducting a lake survey, observation plots or HAB plots should be spaced evenly around the lake. The plots are 15 meters wide and extend 15 meters from the bank top into the riparian zone and 10 meters from the waterline into the littoral zone. The shore zone, if applicable, lies between the littoral and riparian zones and may include a beach and or facing bank. Step 3. Logistics. After establishing survey units, subsurvey units, and HAB plots, it is necessary to plan route details, 
mode of transport, accommodation, and any other logistical arrangements. The following material should be assembled prior to conducting field work. GPS, binoculars, digital camera, hydrometric devices such as an electromagnetic flow meter, acoustic Doppler current profiler, an ADCP, and deep water thermometer. Appropriate clothing, for example, all-in-one waders, and a boat, if necessary. All field equipment and instruments should be checked beforehand to make sure that they are calibrated correctly and have adequate power supply. Surveys should be carried out during low flow periods when the riverbed structure and substrate are visible. In addition, field surveys should be carried out any time from June to September as several parameters rely on assessing the structure of vegetation. Step 4. Assessment An assessment of map-based parameters should be carried out before going out into the field. These include catchment parameters as well as those related to river channel modifications or lake surface areas. Maps and aerial photographs can also help in the assessment of land use and floodplain structure. Assessment results should then be entered in the field protocol. We recommend filling out as much paperwork as possible before heading out into the field. If available map data is insufficient, it is necessary to rely on expert evaluations based on available data knowledge pertaining to similar sites. Step 5. Field Survey after using GPS to establish geographical coordinates, field measurements of water levels are made for each survey unit. Next, take pictures of the survey area for future reference. Weather and site conditions, if deemed relevant to the survey, should also be recorded. The hydromorphological survey should be carried out as team members walk along the water course and by wading into the river. A survey boat should be used on rivers that are too hazardous or deep for wading. Field surveys should be carried out within previously defined survey units and or HAB plots. Also, relevant survey protocols should be completed and previously recorded map survey parameters should be consulted whenever possible. Any change of location of a survey unit should be mapped and documented for future use. A survey unit should not be moved from its exact prior location unless it becomes restricted or impossible to reach. Three survey forms must be completed for each river survey unit, namely one on site protocol, a second on structural features, and a third on hydrology. The purposes of the survey forms are to guide the collection of general data about the survey unit and survey site, carry out the hydrological regime assessment, and register longitudinal connectivity affected by artificial structures and morphology. A detailed guide for completing hydromorphological assessment protocols, including evaluation and scoring, can be found in the Water Quality Hydromorphological Survey Design Manual developed in the framework of the EPIRB project. The site protocol should contain a general description of the survey unit, including the river's identifying features, present status, and site and catchment attributes. It should also include a photo or sketch of the site, the name of the surveyor, and the date of the survey, as well as information on channel and site parameters. Longitudinal connectivity refers to types of natural and artificial migration barriers that may exist along a river and is assessed based on distance from the survey site, height of obstruction, and possibility for migration. This information can be obtained from maps or river managers with expert knowledge. Morphological assessment parameters can be divided into four categories. Physical characteristics of the channel, in-stream features, for example, bed elements or bed substrates, bank and riparian zone features, for example, natural riparian vegetation, stabilization, or bank profile, and floodplain parameters, for example, flooded area or land use of the floodplain. Each parameter is assigned a score from 1 to 5, with 1 being the best score. The score for each parameter is averaged for the survey unit, after which survey unit parameter values within each of the four categories are averaged to give the survey's unit's final morphology category score. 
The hydrology assessment is used to evaluate the effect of artificial impacts on the hydrological regime within the survey unit. Artificial impacts may include hydropower dams and related activities, water abstraction for irrigation or water supply, and industrial effluents. Hydrological features are assessed through four parameters compared to the reference state. Change in mean flow, change in low flow, change of water level range, and impact of artificial frequent flow fluctuations. It is preferable that estimates be based on hydrological records. If records are not available, parameter estimates should be made from available data on abstraction rates, outlet rates from power stations, industrial discharges, etc. Measurements on water level and water discharge should be carried out if this type of data is missing. The point for taking water level measurements should be fixed, and its coordinates should be defined for future observations. The final hydrology score is calculated as the average of scores given for mean flow, low flow, water level range, and frequent flow fluctuations. This score is not to be combined with the morphology score. Lake surveys are performed somewhat differently. A lake habitat survey protocol should be completed for each lake to determine its quality status. Detailed habitat characteristics should be recorded at previously identified hab plots. Parameters belonging to the morphological category are lake depth variation, substrate quantity and structure, and structure and condition of the lake shore zone. The lake's entire perimeter should be surveyed by viewing the opposite shore with binoculars to record the pressure types. Sediment sampling of lakes is carried out with special samplers, and water temperatures should be taken with a deep water thermometer. National institutions are expected to provide these hydrometric instruments. Basic hydrological information on a given lake, such as principal use, type, pressures, daily and annual water level fluctuation, residence time, connection to groundwater, depositional landforms, and maximum height of bank erosion should be recorded where possible. To provide a single measure representative of the physical characteristics of the water body, an index site should be taken at the lake's deepest point for which the use of a boat is necessary. Field operations must be conducted in a manner that protects the health and safety of field personnel. Every team member has the authority and responsibility to stop operations if an unsafe condition develops or is observed. All field personnel should carry a safety kit, should be familiar with basic emergency medical procedures, and know the location of the nearest medical facility. Any field environment presents multiple hazards, including vehicle breakdown or accident, or bogging down in wet conditions, temperature hazards, which are typically sunburn and heat stroke, working in, over, or adjacent to water, and poisonous plants and animals, such as spiders and snakes. The field team is advised to examine potential hazards in order to minimize exposure to these types of danger. Step 6. Classification of Water Bodies Parameter scores from the field survey should be converted into a classification. For rivers, the final score is calculated from the mean scores, and the hydromorphological quality class is determined based on the table pictured, which pairs the score categories with its corresponding quality class, marked with different colors. The lower the mean score, the better the water status. For lakes, classification is determined by the difference between scores for a lake in natural conditions and a lake under pressure. We hope that the information on this video is helpful. If you wish to obtain further details, there are a number of websites that provide plenty of in-depth information. The main documents are the EU Water Framework Directive and relevant guidance documents. We also recommend the Water Quality Hydromorphological Survey Design Manual, which was prepared in the framework of the EPIRB project. The European Committee for Standardization also publishes relevant guidance standards, which are useful. Thank you for watching.